Good morning. How are you all doing today? Oh, that's good. Yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. No, hey, my name is Alex Hershey. I'm the pastor of the branches. I'm so glad that you guys are here this morning as we get to kick off the new year here. Uh, last week, maybe you were sleeping. I don't know what you were doing, but glad, uh, but glad we can gather back here at the rec center and, and to worship Jesus together. Uh, if this is your first or your second time here, we're so excited that you're here. I want to encourage you to fill out the connection card. I want to encourage everyone to fill out the connection card as you got in. You can tear off that tab and you can put down your information. Uh, we always love to know who's worshiping with us. Also, another thing, uh, another thing on uh, this tear-off tab is a place for prayer requests. Uh, we're a church that believes in the power of prayer. I just want to say this. I don't know what else to say it, but like this week in our world, if you are a sports fan, or even if not, if you just picked up a newspaper, I don't even know if newspapers exist, but if you saw the news, we saw an act of the power of prayer uh, uh, that happened in the NFL with, uh, with Hamlin, and, and it was just amazing. So the power of prayer is real. No matter if it's something big or small, God works through the power of prayer. So I encourage you to fill out this connection card if there's a prayer request that you have on it, to put that prayer request on it. And then we have little black boxes in the back, and you can just drop those in on your way out. Well, awesome. Uh, the mission here at the branches is to connect with God, grow in Christ, and to love others and we want to do that in the in the most gracious way and loving way that we can we are not a perfect church but we desire to love jesus passionately and to love others in a powerful way and so that's an exciting thing that we do as a church here we have a few announcements as we kick off this new year uh and so uh the first announcement i want to have uh, katie Beringer come up also my sister look at this look at that we're clearly the same height anyway but uh she has an announcement as we kick off the new year we love small groups here at the branches and this is an awesome time to to if you're interested in that to to grow in your faith and to learn and meet some new people this is an awesome opportunity for that so i'll let katie talk about this um good morning just the same thing as what alex said um if you are not if you are not involved in a small group this is just a um an opportunity, a time where you could get connected to one. Um, there also on your connection card, there is a QR code um, if you're interested in signing up for a small group. Um, you're also welcome to just come and find me and talk to me about it as well. Um, small groups are just an opportunity to get to, to know s other people within our community just a little bit better um, and to feel more connected. Um, and it's also an opportunity to just take a, a, de a deeper step in your walk in faith. So if you're interested at all, again, you can look on the connection card or you can come in and talk to me. That's so good, sister. Anyway, uh, when we started the church, my sister and her husband, Alan, which is also my brother-in-law, they were in Cambodia. And so for the last, I don't know, I don't, we've been back for six years. It's just so awesome that uh, I... I love hanging out with my sister. Anyway, thanks, Katie. A few other announcements that we have, uh, just so we don't take up too much time, is that um, we have a men's and a women's group that meets uh, throughout the week. Our, uh, on January 11th is the men's group, Craftsmen, and then also on January 18th is the women's group, Senoritas and Margaritas, that meets on the 18th. And then uh, something that we're going to be starting uh, this year is called Abide Worship. And we're going to be doing this, and I know uh, we just locked in the location. It's just going to be sort of a time where we, uh, if you're in the midst of a busyness season or whatever, uh, once a month during on a Thursday night, we're going to be able to gather at Bartlett Chapel for worship and a time of uh, a message and uh, some prayer at 6 o'clock. So if that's something that's interesting to you, that's January 26th uh, that's coming up. And then also we have a family game night on January 27th, the Friday. We're going to be meeting uh, in room 139, which is here in the rec center. Uh, it's just going to be fun, pizza, and, and just hanging out with family. So uh, uh, just something to put down. We're, we're excited for January. We're excited for this coming year at the branches. It's going to be a great year uh, where we get to grow and knowing who God is calling us to be and become. But it's also a year, 11 months from now, which I'm really excited about. I'm excited.
excited about this month too, but their branches will turn 10 years old. And so this is a year of celebration for us of doing a decade of ministry in this in this Henders County area and just really fun that we, uh, people who've been here from the beginning or people who are just showing up, but we've been able to get to know each other and grow together and to understand who God is calling us to be. And that's just something that is so, so exciting uh, for me that we get to continue to do as a church here in this area. And so I'm excited about that. Well, I don't know how your last week has been, but for me, my last week was our kids were back in school. And then after I also took the previous week off of that. So going back to work after vacation, kids back in school, I'm exhausted. Holy smokes, what in the world? Anyway, but my gosh, no matter how busy or how still or how nice your last week was, we get to gather here today to begin a new week. We get to gather here right now and set our hearts upon Jesus and allow for Jesus to stir in us so that we can feel his love And that as we leave this place, we can go and share his love with those around us. Would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for gathering us here this morning. As we enter into a new year, we desire to enter into a a walk with you. Where we can know you more and where we can grow into who you desire for us to be. Now Lord, we know that none of us have come here perfect. And yet you desire to love us perfectly. And so help us to allow for our hearts to be open to you, to hear from you, and to let your spirit to stir in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, would you stand right now uh, before we sing and and praise God together? Would you stand right now and get to know the people around you? And then tell them uh, Jesus loves you. So you're glad you're here and Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Glad you're all here. Glad you're here. Jesus loves you. Good morning. Let's worship. Give God praise for the new year, for the life that he's going to give us for 2023. We'll start off with worshiping in the house of the Lord. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison door, He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. But we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in His place. We won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves.
Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will see The goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good every breath that I am able I will see the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me to the fire in the darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so The goodness of God. Your goodness is not a lie, running after me. Your goodness is not a lie, running after me. With my life and I'll surrender now, give you everything. Your goodness is not a lie. This is running out, running out to me. Your goodness is running out, running out to me. With my life and I surrender now, give you everything. Your goodness is running out, running out to me. All my life you have been faithful. So, so good With every breath that I am able I will see the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been 
Father, thank you for, again, this new year, this fresh start, to put you in the center of our lives. Thank you for everything you do. Again, the ways you bless us that we may not even recognize in the moment. But I ask that we continue to put our eyes on you so we can praise you for those blessings, for those opportunities. We are a new creation in you, Lord. We shed off the old and put on Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for the sacrifice every day to wash, to wash us as white as snow. Again, renewing us in your, in your eyes. Lord, be with Pastor Alex as he delivers your message today and open our hearts and ears to what the Spirit wants us to hear and move in the direction this week. And it's in your Son's name that we pray. Amen. It is uh, a new year. Last week, uh, the rec center was closed, so we weren't able to have a service. So this is our kickoff. So if you're like, where's my church attendance? You're perfect if you're here today. You guys have perfect church attendance in 2023. Oh, my gosh. Everybody gets a gold star this morning. Also, if uh, you hear a big rush of wind behind you, uh, those are the inflatables for after church. It's not that like the Holy Spirit literally is coming upon us right now. Uh, maybe that, I hope that, but like, uh, but there's also inflatables. So make sure you, you, you don't just leave after church. Grab, have your kids come and um, uh, jump up and down a little bit and bounce into the new year. Uh, one of the things that I really find interesting when we talk about faith, is something for me in my heart. I, I'm a big, big person of rhythm and movement. I love, I love music. I love being part of something that is, is headed in, in a direction where there's lots of love and grace involved. But one of the things when we look at faith, it's not so, ever supposed to be a still thing. Faith is supposed to be this, this moment of progressing forward and allowing for our lives to continue to mature in faith. It is not something that once we hear the story of Jesus, we're done. But in fact, we hear the story of Jesus and we understand that the rest of the gospel is Christ growing in us so that we can come to be known as a mature follower of Jesus. And just as we begin this year, I'm really excited to talk about how do we then live differently than the world? A mature follower of Jesus 
doesn't necessarily look like a mature person in the world. It's a different thing. And so as we follow Jesus, what does that look like? And how do we live differently? And I know, for me at least, I feel like as I talk to people out in the community, as, I, as we talk to each other, especially over the last few years, we at some point get to the point where we say in this conversation, it feels like we're living in a world that is upside down right now. So how do we live differently in a world, in a culture, that is feeling that it is upside down? How do we live in a way for Jesus that we uh, let Jesus to come into us so that we can live in a way that he has designed us to live? This is a beautiful thing. This is a hard thing. And this is an important thing, as I hope you step into a new year, to say, help me, Lord, to continue to mature in my understanding of you and my faith. Now, I love this about Jesus. He doesn't care if you just said yes to the Lord in the last 30 seconds or that you've been following him for a hundred years. He just says, come to me. Grow in me and know me more. So we're all on the same playing field with Jesus. We all can take that next step of faith to grow in maturing in Christ's great love. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for bringing us here this morning, and thank you so much for allowing our hearts to be touched by you. We pray right now that we can begin this year by learning what does it mean to live differently? What does it mean to live for you? What does it mean to take steps every day, every week of our life that draw us closer to who you desire us to be? So, Lord, right now we ask your Holy Spirit to fall down upon us, to stir in us, to open our hearts, to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just a few years ago, my parents took me to my uh, uh, summer uh, introduction to college. That was just a few years ago, anyway. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Anyway, but I remember walking on the campus and being overwhelmed and just like, oh my gosh, they expect us to continue to learn in college? Crazy. And I remember going from thing, and I was probably more just checking out human beings around my age uh, and just seeing if they were cool or not, if I was going to have any friends because I was going somewhere where I didn't know anybody. And uh, I was just sort of just eyeballing everything. I think my parents were like, I hope Alex doesn't end up living with us in a month again. You know, I think that was probably some of their thought process as well. And so I'm just looking around and, and figuring out classes and figuring out what I need. And I remember we went to the bookstore afterwards and uh, that's back kids you used to buy books in person anyway and so but uh but we would go to the bookstore and i remember we got a few of my books so i could get a head start i don't know what my parents are thinking i guarantee you full confess i did not get a head start and then i remember there was also this uh this kit and maybe you might some of you might remember that it was a planning kit it was a planner. Does any a planner? It was like with paper and a binder, and it had all these things: tasks, what you were supposed to do, accomplish those tasks, and it was all in this nice binder. And it was this kit. And my mom and dad looked at this kit and they said, "Alex, we think that you're going to need this in college." And I think my dad gave me like a little lecture in that moment of like, "This is what's helped me." And I'm just like, "Want, want, 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 want." And what they didn't realize is they should have bought the kit that said help Alex open up this kit and use this planner. And I just remember having this planner and I watched as the summer it collected dust on it. And then I remember taking it to my dorm room and still just watching the dust rise on this planner. I will say my first year of college grades looked like I didn't use that planner. So uh, I probably should have used that planner anyway. Um, but the thing is, is that I remember at that stage, my parents trying to teach me that life is busy, and if you want margin in your life, you will be careful about how you use your time. If you want to accomplish things, you need to plan things out, right? It's an important thing. Now, right, now it's so much different, at least for me. Maybe there's some of you who are still hardcore planners, and you've got your binders, and you've got flowcharts and all this. I have Google, 
right? That's what I have. I have Google Calendar, and it has saved so many things, including my marriage. No, but anyway, but it's so true. Like, I have appointments. I know when I'm... It reminds me 10 minutes before I'm supposed to be somewhere where I'm supposed to be. It's amazing. Everything that goes in my life goes through this. And I would love to say, because I have this, I have margin in my life. But the reality is is that has allowed for me to fill my life to the point of almost being over busy. It is a struggle for me in my life to not have a full calendar. I have learned that since this has happened for our society, not my bottom, my phone, anyway, hips don't lie. All right, so anyway, but like, but since this, I've learned that our society has not worked less, but we now work more, right? We are now a 24-7 world. You can bank at 3 in the morning. You can buy a car at 4 in the morning. You can play video games with someone in Japan while it's light there and dark here. You can, in the middle of, of any moment at any time, touch base with anybody. It is crazy how we are living in a 24-7 world. We have access to everything at all the time, and we love it, and we like it. But the reality is this, is that the model that God uses isn't a 24-7 model. It's not the model that he uses. And I believe that one of the models that he uses is the 24-6 model, and if we live in this model we begin to live differently than the current world that we are a part of. You see, the 24-7 model is a brand new model, to be honest. It's, It's not that very old, but for all of us in here, we've been greatly affected by it. We really have been. Western society for thousands of years operated on the 24 6 model, probably because the heavy influence of Christianity as well. Everything, right, we we talk about our grandparents, how everything was shut down on Sunday. There was nothing open. You couldn't even sometimes go to restaurants, right? You couldn't go buy a car. There used to be a thing actually called banker's hours. Do you remember these banker's hours? Nine to five? You couldn't do business if the bank wasn't open, so why be open? We live in a different world than just a few decades ago. And we are a test experiment. And we have to understand as we begin this new year, this is why I wanted to start on this. Maybe this sermon's just for me. But I want to learn how to live in this 24-6 model that God has for us. In Genesis 2-3, if you have your Bibles, this is a great place to start. First first book of the Bible. Uh, But we see this right off the bat. Just in one verse, Genesis 2-3, it says this, Then God blessed the seventh day, and he made it holy. Because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Right? The six previous days, he just created a universe. No big deal. Right? He just put a little few things together. Right? Fish swimming in the ocean. You know? Giraffes hanging out in the, in the desert. Whatever. On the safari. Yeah. That's what's happening. But then God gets to this moment, after all of that is created, he gets to this place and he says, now it is time to rest. And I love it because right before that, he creates humanity, right? He creates Adam and he creates Eve. And we see humanity being formed. And he says it's good. And, then, and he says it's very good. And then he says, let us rest. Let us rest and find peace. And this is when we begin to see that that seven number, which is perfect, also means nap. That's nice. That's not what, but it's nice to think, well, perfection is napping. I like that idea. But we begin to see this use of Sabbath. That's the key word today. And I think that's a word that is important for us as we begin a new year. In a world that can say we are busy all the time, God is saying, but are you taking a Sabbath? In a world where being uh, burnt out is not just for the super important people like a few decades ago, 
we're seeing that burnout is actually everybody. We are all finding that place in our heart and in our lives where we're saying, I'm not doing enough, and then all of a sudden we do too much, and we find ourselves being burnt out. And so we need to find what does it look like for us, what does it look like f- to follow Jesus, to live into this 24-6 lifestyle. How can this be, and what are the effects of it for us? Exodus, the next book in the Bible, Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, it says this. And this is part of the Ten Commandments. These are Ten Commandments that God gave His people to live well, right? This is like the only one, when we get to the Sabbath, where there's like a description of what to do. This means it's important, right? Moses coming down, Charlton Heston coming down with the slabs. No, Moses coming down with this. This is important. Exodus 20, 8 through 11. It says, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, either you, your son or daughter, your male or female servant, your animals or any foreign res- foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Isn't this amazing? I mean, we get the description of what you need to do, right? There's a lot of times where we can be like, God, just tell me what to do. He's telling us what to do, right? Right here. He's telling, don't do anything. That's always like the best. That's always what you want your parents to tell you. That's all, right? Hey, today, we don't want you to do anything, right? Like, that's, I, okay, anyway, that's never happened. All right, but anyway, but God is telling us this. He wants you to take a Sabbath. Sa- he, God gives us this. He says, I want you to live in this 26 or 24-6 world. This is the thing. We are a people that like to be busy now. We've learned to love it. We have learned to love to have everything a click away. I get mad when I have to go to a movie theater now, and I love movie theaters. I'm like, well, why isn't it just on my TV? I want to see it on my TV, and I want to see it now. We want things now. Also, we have learned, for some of us, that being busy can become something that we brag about. How was your break? Oh, it was great. We never sat down. We did everything three times, times three. We did it all, right? We get excited about that. We have goals for our family life to do all these things and accomplish all these things in a short 18-year period that we have kids living in our homes. We like to be busy. I mean, and we like things to go our way. I mean, just recently we had the, the great trash fiasco of the end of 2022. We're like, there's a winter storm. We don't care. It's minus 40 out and it's Christmas. Don't care. Why isn't our trash gone? You know? Like, we want things done. Let's get it going. Come on. I've got more trash to make and you need to take this trash. Anyway, sorry. But what we have learned really in this 24-7 world is that no longer do we have a natural pause. There's no natural pause in our life. And for some of us, when we ever begin to feel that maybe life is pausing just a little bit, things are getting a little bit too quiet, we get nervous and we fill it up. If we have too much space, then what are we going to do? Look at each other? We get nervous in that. But there is no natural pause. And let me say this. This is a new thing. This is a new thing that we are figuring out. So what is critical and what is it to, that we can understand about how do we take a Sabbath? How do we understand this 24-6 life that we are called to live? How can we learn to stop for 24 hours a week and not work or do commerce? 
How do we understand that God didn't create the seventh day for brunch, but to gather in a place to worship God? How do we understand this? The reality is, is that what we're learning is that there's become consequences of our busyness. One of the consequences is this, is that we have become a people of no restraint. We have no restraint. If we can do something, then we think we can do it. If we think we can fill the time, we fill it. We don't want to, uh, we, we, if we get a text at 2 in the morning from our boss, we think that we have to respond to it. We've become a people of no restraint, and we want what we want, and we want it now. Family dinner doesn't matter because this phone call is more important. This email, I have to respond to it because I've been waiting for it. I don't care that we're eating at 7 o'clock at night. This is more important. We've become a people of no restraint. But I think something that is troubling my heart the most over these last few years is simply this. Is that I think the most significant consequence is that we are finding out that people are now becoming too busy for God. I think that has become the great consequence of the 24-7 world. You know, I do research for my sermons, and I study, and I, uh, I do this. And, and I'll, tell, I'll be honest with you, there's probably times where I've been doing this for close to 20 years now that I'll be studying, and arrogance kicks in. I'm like, I've already learned this. I'm so smart. I'm amazing, right? I don't know if you're like that in your workplace, you know, or you're like, oh, I, I'm just learning all the time. Everything's new. I don't, oh, my gosh. But for me, there's times. This week, I was studying... And then the conviction fell over me as I had never heard this before. And so I'm not sharing this out of guilt because it made me hit the floor when I heard it. In all of Scripture, there was only one person who was too busy for God. Showed up late to a meeting. They had a planned meeting, and he showed up late to the meeting. The one person who said they were too busy for God, I have stuff going on. He says, I was going to and fro in the book of Job. And that one person is Satan. The one person who was living the 24-7 life, who was saying I was too busy for God, is Satan. And this is the thing, right? Because Satan's whole, like, gig is to get you to live like him. Jesus' whole gig is to get you to live like him, Jesus, right? Why do we begin talking about Sabbath? Because it helps us to see where we are in our lives and what are we serving and what are we after, what are we pursuing? What is more important to us? Making time for God setting up our lives to be filled with Jesus that, that one day a week, making sure that when we map out our weeks on our phones or our planners, if you're old school, that we just have a big X over this day where we say this is the day for Christ and Christ alone. I'm telling you, this is all about living differently. It's all about how is 2023 going to be different? And what are we modeling our lives? And how do we impact a world that seems to be going upside down? How do we impact in a way that over the last few decades, everything has shifted drastically, and now we find ourselves at a tipping point of who do we choose to live for? This is the thing. If you want to live the rushed and the overwhelmed and the burnout life, continue doing the path of the 24-7 But when we look and when we see that Jesus wants us to model our lives after him, it is always a life of peace, of having stillness, of having love and grace and calm and connectedness. This is the life that Jesus wants for us. This is important for us to understand. And so I just want to give you uh, the how And the how is interesting. If we look uh, when God's people, when Moses 
led God's people out of Pharaoh's hand. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Anyway, but when Moses led God's people out of Pharaoh's hand, they were out in the wilderness. And God still provided for them in the midst of the wilderness. And if you remember this story, manna would fall from the sky. Food would fall from the sky. And the practice was simply this. Only take what you need. That's so cool. Only take what you need. And so God's people had to prepare daily what God was going to provide for them. But then on the day before the Sabbath, so this isn't necessarily, this, this is a Jesus thing, Sabbath is. It's also an OT thing, an Old Testament thing. He said, but the day before the Sabbath, a double portion would fall from the sky. A double portion would fall from the sky. Nowadays, when we hear double portion, at least I do, I'm like, sweet. Let's go spend it right away. Boom. I don't think, this is going to help me prepare for later. I don't think that. I'm like, I got it. Let's just go. Let's go. But this was a practice in that double portion where God was saying to his people, I want you to prepare if you're going to take a good and healthy Sabbath, you have to prepare for it. You have to prepare for it. This is hard because it doesn't just naturally occur. But we have to prepare for it. Christmas Day for me is my perfect Sabbath for me, for my family. We have sort of shut down like traveling anywhere. And so this is why it's easy for me to talk about this because I just did it, you know. Anyway, well, look at me. But I did it one day out of 365, you know. But, but I, it's easy. for us, I, we shut everything out where we're, we don't travel anywhere. I make a fire all day long anyway. But it is just one day of being present with each other and celebrating the Christmas story, right? Nothing else. But for that to happen, I have to start preparing weeks in advance. Do we have enough firewood? Do we have enough food? Do we have all these things, right? Good Sabbath takes good preparation. It really does. It takes preparation to prepare for it. And I believe that it's something that is so important for us. Because I believe that Sabbath allows for us to be rested. Allows for us to be still. Allows for us to connect with God. And when we have that day where it is set apart to connect with God, we are able to be rested. And to know that God is preparing a way for us in the week ahead. Because we will face hard things. We will face good things and we'll face the in-between. But when we are centered upon Jesus, we begin to know that he will get us through those things. I remember there was a, a season back to college uh, when I wasn't using my planner. And I realized that I had a test, a big test. And it was on Monday. And I, I went to study. And I, I, was, I was telling my friend, I can't go to church today. I've got to study for this test. And now this friend of mine, he's now, he's a pastor now anyway, and he looked at me and he said, and I always, he says, if you make time for God, God will make time for you. And I just took that at that moment as, oh, so I just won't study, you know. And maybe what he was really saying was saying like, the only way you're going to pass that test, Alex, is if Jesus, is, you need to get to church, you know. So like, you know, anyway, so, but but that sort of rang with me, and I was blessed by him at such a long time ago because that made more of a difference in my life than the expensive planner, to be honest. Because I learned that I had to get everything done before Sunday. That's not, that's before I was a pastor, before I even thought I'd ever be, I still am not sure if I'm supposed to be a pastor, but anyway, but all along before that. And I just remember that's always stayed, and I've always tried to get everything done so that I can make this day a day that I'm with God. And so, it's so like Alex is coming out hitting left and right. I felt like this was a sermon that was like, as I was preparing, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just like talking about finances, and this is like talking about sex in front of y'all. You know, like, this is intense because we love our time. But I'll tell you, if you want to live differently for Jesus, this will change everything. To learn to live in the 24-6 world, you will stand out as a follower of Jesus in this community that we're a part of. You will. And what better way 
what better way than just saying, you know what? I'm taking a nap. What, 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 what? I want some of that. It's Jesus. He napped too, you know? But wherever you are today, let me just say this. Jesus' grace and love is big enough for you. Jesus can make a way wherever you're facing, and Jesus will open your heart to experience him. Our call is to continue to grow closer to what he is calling us to become. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy and your love. We pray right now in a world that is seeming very busy and very overwhelming, that so much is going on and and so many things are taking place and we're facing burnout, that we can have a time where we actually just spend with you, where we just know you, and we are good with that. It will be hard But Lord, we desire to do hard things when it means that we can live closer to who you are. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Here at the branches, we take communion every Sunday and we come forward and we receive the elements, uh, which are still in a little cup. uh, and, And we welcome everyone who believes and confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord in their lives. And so what we do is we come forward as the band is playing. We take the elements and then we go back and sit down. And then after the song, I come forward and we take communion together. And so as we prepare our hearts and our minds to take communion this morning, we're reminded. We're reminded of the sacrifice that Christ made for us. Christ laid down his life so that we could have life now and abundantly. Christ allowed for his life to represent to us a life of sacrifice. And so we pray right now that we can live in a way that is honoring to him. So we want to confess any of the sins in our hearts that are keeping us from growing closer to Jesus. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we ask right now that you bless these elements that they represent to us, your body and your blood that was broken and spilled for us. Lord, if there is any sin in our lives that we need to get rid of, we confess it now to you in the stillness of our heart. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your forgiveness, and we thank you for your perfect love in Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Come and receive.
the body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. And now let us go from this place knowing that we are loved by Jesus and that He is working in our hearts. He is desiring to live in our hearts every day. And so let us go from this place and begin a new week and a new year sharing the love and the grace of Jesus because we get to be His light in this world. Let us go with Christ in this week. Amen. Also, let's bounce around too. So have some fun with that. All right, see you guys next week.